So, in today's lecture, we look at the notion of uh, a vector space. Almost all of us have uh, done uh, vector calculus, calculus uh, involving uh, two variables, uh, uh, three variables. For example, uh, look at uh, vectors in the plane. We have done vector addition and then multiplying a vector by a scalar. Uh, we have, uh, for example, this is called a linear combination of vectors. We have also encountered the linear combination of uh, functions, especially when uh, we have discussed uh, the notion of uh, solutions of uh, differential equations. If uh, y1 and y2 are two solutions of a linear differential equation, then, uh, then a linear combination alpha times y1 plus beta times y2 is also a solution of the differential equation. Uh, the uh, structure that uh, formalizes uh, this uh, notion of linear combination etc. is called a vector space. This is a basic uh, object uh, of uh, linear algebra. So, what I will do is uh, today give the definition of a vector space and then give a variety of uh, examples uh, just to tell you that uh, vector spaces uh, uh, abund uh, in the whole of uh, mathematics. So, these examples for instance will include uh, the differential uh, calculus uh, example that I mentioned and uh, also other examples. Okay, so, let us look at first the notion of a vector space. So, here is the definition. A vector space consists of uh, the following, consists of the first object is uh, field. So, we say vector space over a field. Uh, the first object is uh, f a field. We say that uh, it is a field of uh, scalars. In this uh, entire course uh, of linear algebra, we will restrict our attention to mostly R and in some examples uh, the complex uh, field also. Then we have uh, V a set of uh, elements. V of course, is non, uh, non empty set of elements, these elements are called vectors. These elements are called vectors. Then uh, third uh, aspect is a rule called uh, vector addition, a rule called vector addition. This is a binary operation which uh, for uh, x y in v assigns uh, assigns uh, a unique uh, vector which uh, we will uh, denote as uh, x plus y. This x plus y belongs to v. Okay, so, there is a binary operation on uh, v, it is called the vector addition. This binary operation satisfies the following conditions. Okay, for every x, y in v, there is a unique x plus y, which also belongs in v. So, it is close with respect to this operation, such that the following conditions are satisfied, such that uh, let us uh, write uh, these conditions here. First, uh, it is commutative, x plus y equals uh, y plus x. Second condition, it is uh, associative, x plus y plus z equals uh, x plus y plus z. So, that is associativity. Condition 3 for uh, every, I am sorry, so condition 3, condition 3, there exists, there exists an element uh, denoted by 0. There exists an element denoted by 0 that is uh, in V such that, so uh, this 0 acts like additive identity. So, we have this condition to be satisfied such that x plus 0 equals uh, x. Okay. See all these are uh, for all uh, x, y, z uh, in V. So, such that uh, this holds for all x in V. And, uh, the last condition, fourth condition is that for every x in V, 
there exists an element which we denote as minus x. This minus x belongs to V such that this is like the neg negative additive uh, additive inverse or negative element such that uh, x plus uh, minus x equals the additive identity all right. So, these conditions hold for all uh, x, y, z in V. So, this is with respect to the um, addition vector addition operation these four conditions must be satisfied. So, we have uh, so a vector space has a field. So, there is a field over which the vector space is defined. Uh, there is um, V a set of vectors satisfying these four conditions. Now, what is the interaction between the field elements and the vector elements that is given by scalar multiplication. So, I will say for a rule called uh, scalar multiplication. A rule called uh, scalar multiplication, which uh, for every x in V and uh, a scalar alpha in F, which which for every x in V and alpha you know, assigns alpha in F, assigns a number alpha times x in V. So, for every x in V alpha in F this product I mean the scalar multiplication alpha times x must be in V and this scalar multiplication must satisfy the following four conditions. So, what are those conditions? Remember that the underlying uh, remember that F is a field. So, uh, F uh, for instance uh, has 0 as well as 1, 1 is the uh, multiplicative identity. So, the first condition uh, relates uh, uses the multiplicative identity. So, I will again write uh, four uh, conditions for the scalar multiplications uh, 1 into uh, x equals x. So, for all x uh, y in V and for all uh, alpha beta in F. So, I have this condition 1 into x equal to x condition 2 alpha into x plus y equals alpha x plus alpha y. I should actually write a dot here, but uh, we will uh, follow the convention of not using this dot alpha into x plus y is alpha x plus alpha y. Condition 3 is uh, if you look at alpha b alpha beta of x, it says you do it uh, repeatedly. This is alpha into beta x and finally, condition 4 is you take scale as alpha and beta look at alpha plus beta of x this, uh, this must be alpha x plus beta x. So, the scalar multiplication must satisfy uh, these four conditions, the vector addition must satisfy these four conditions, the underlying uh, set f must be a field then uh, v is called a vector space over f. So, in this case we say that uh, we say that V plus dot is a vector space over F. So, this is a formal definition of a vector space all right. Let us look at uh, some examples. Now, before we proceed with the examples let us understand that uh, the uh, two examples that I told you uh, uh, in some sense as motivating examples satisfy these conditions example of two solutions coming from a differential equation and the behavior of vectors in the plane for instance. So, let us look at some examples. I will give an abundance of examples just to illustrate that this is a, an absolutely fundamental object in mathematics not just in linear algebra. So, let us look at examples. Let us start with the simplest example. Uh, you take uh, V as uh, R also the underlying field as R then we know that uh, then uh, addition is what x plus y is the usual addition U usual addition of real numbers scalar multiplication is also the usual uh, multiplication.
then this is a vector space so v over f is a vector space that is we say that r is a vector space uh, we will follow this notation only for this uh, uh, today's lecture we will simply say r is a real vector space c is a complex vector space etc so r over r is a vector space as i said we can also say that r is a real vector space so this is uh, the basic uh, example similarly one could define c as a vector space over itself in general any field over itself is a vector space over that field second example is also trivial take v to be single term zero and uh, uh, f is any field uh, you would have to define so you must define uh, vector addition scalar multiplication vector addition is defined like this scalar multiplication alpha times 0 equal to 0 for all alpha and f then this is a vector space okay. v over f is a vector space over the field f okay these are trivial examples let us look at uh, uh, the first non trivial example look at uh, f2 f2 is what f2 is the set of all uh, set of all uh, vectors x written in this manner x equal to x1 x2 so I will write it as a column vector set, a, set of all x1 x2 such that x1 and x2 both belong to the underlying field so this is f2 okay set of all column uh, set of all columns which uh, uh, set of all columns which have just two coordinates which have just two components what is vector addition scalar multiplication once once I specify that we can verify whether it is a vector space so uh, let us take uh, two elements x y in f2 then uh, x can be written as uh, x1 x2 y can be similarly written y1 y2 let us also take alpha in the underlying field then x plus y we define x plus y to be the column vector the natural way to define addition is x1 plus y1 that is the first coordinate x2 plus y2 is the second coordinate this is obviously a binary relation scalar multiplication alpha x you do it for each coordinate multiply the scalar alpha to each coordinate alpha x1 alpha x2 then uh, it is uh, an easy exercise to verify that uh, f2 over f that is v equals f2 so v over f is a vector space with uh, respect to this addition operation and this scalar multiplication okay now we can do a little more general we can do a little more general so let us look at uh, fn fn this time is the set of all x that can be written as x1 x2 etc xn so there are n coordinates this time such that each xi comes from the underlying field this simply extends uh, f2 that was uh, given in the previous example how do you define addition as before coordinate wise x1 plus y1 x2 plus y2 etc xn plus yn so x is uh, this y is y1 y2 etc yn addition is defined in this manner scalar multiplication similarly for alpha in the underlying field then uh, again we can show that uh, fn over f is a vector space with respect to these operations okay so this is uh, a little extension of the third example we can do a little more general let us look at uh, f m cross n f m cross n now this m cross n should uh, suggest uh, the objects that uh, we are considering here so what is the definition here this is the set of all x such that x has m into n coordinates that is one way of looking at it which will give rise to the same vector space as above there is a slightly different way of looking at uh, f m cross n which is the set of all a which can be written as a 1 1 a 1 2 etc a 1 n so this is a set of all uh, m cross n matrices matrices with entries coming from the underlying field which uh, matrices which have m m rows and n columns 
a1 etc a11 etc a1 n a21 a22 etc a2n let me write the last row am1 am2 etc amn so these numbers aij they all come from f 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to m 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n such an object is called a matrix so you collect the set of all matrices with the property that uh, the matrices have m rows and n columns the entries of the matrix come from the underlying field f then uh, again the operations of uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication is natural by the way here it is addition of matrices but still we refer to it as vector addition that is each element in f m cross n will be referred to as a vector okay now this is the terminology that uh, we will adopt so a vector will not denote uh, any more uh, uh, objects on the plane or uh, objects on the uh, three dimensional space they can now denote matrices we will do a little more general we will uh, use vectors to denote polynomials we will use vectors to denote solutions of differential equations etc okay so let's look at uh, um, uh, vector addition scalar multiplication so take two matrices a and b a written in this manner b written in a similar manner then a plus b is coordinate wise uh, addition so a plus b is a11 plus b11 a12 plus b12 etc a1n plus b1n a21 plus b21 etc a2n plus b2n similarly the last column last row am1 plus bm1 etc amn plus bmn so this is how uh, vector addition is defined scalar multiplication as before alpha times a will be you multiply each entry by the scalar alpha alpha a11 alpha a12 etc alpha a1n alpha a21 alpha a22 etc alpha a2n etc am1 amn so this is how scalar multiplication is defined again one can verify that uh, f m cross n over f is a vector space see for instance the zero element uh, will be the zero matrix the matrix all of whose entries are zero the negative element of an element a will be the matrix whose entries are the negatives of the corresponding entries of the matrix a etc so this is uh, another vector space example of a vector space let's uh, next uh, look at uh, pnr for instance what is pnr pnr equals the set of all polynomials the set of all polynomials um in uh, a real variable in a real variable t with the uh, degree degree of the polynomial not exceeding with the degree not exceeding the number n that uh, is used as a subscript as the subscript here so it is a set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n polynomial in what polynomial in one single real variable t that is what uh, is denoted by this r okay now for example uh, if uh, pq belong to pn of r then these are polynomials i can write polynomials uh, in the following manner p can be written as uh, p0 plus uh, p1t plus uh, p2t square etc plus uh, pn t to the n remember some of these uh, Uh, constants p not p1 p2 etc pn some of these num constants could be zero because it's a set of all polynomials of degree not exceeding n the degree could be less than n in which case pn is zero for instance similarly q q not plus uh, q1 t plus q2 t square etc t is uh, real variable so i have two elements two vectors now so vectors uh, we are using uh, the Uh, name vector for a polynomial here so what is vector addition p plus q that's again the natural addition p plus q is uh, defined as um, so the definition is uh, p not plus q not plus 
P1 plus Q1 T plus etc plus Pn plus Qn T to the n. So, this is a definition of addition, vector addition, scalar multiplication also you would simply bring it uh, to the coefficients. So, alpha times p is alpha p naught plus alpha p 1 t etcetera plus alpha p n t uh, t power n. Then you can again verify that uh, v is uh, this p n r is a real vector, real vector space. Okay. So, p n r is uh, a real vector space, vector, uh, vector space over the field of real numbers. Let us uh, do a little uh, more uh, general. Let us now look at uh, the space of continuous functions, the space of real valued continuous functions on a closed interval a b, the space of real valued continuous functions on the closed interval a b. we should again. Uh, so, I am saying the set of all real valued to continuous functions. So, the underlying field will be R. We should again uh, define uh, vector addition scalar multiplication. Now, that is similar to what uh, we have done earlier for the case of polynomials. This is so called point wise, uh, point wise addition. So, we will do a similar thing here for, uh, for P Q in uh, C of uh, A B define p plus q of t. So, p plus q is a new function whose definition is p plus q at the point t is p of t plus q of t and uh, scalar multiplication is defined similarly. Alpha p is a new function. It is just alpha times p of t this is the most natural way of defining it for all the alpha in uh, R for p q in C of a b. So, it can again be shown that C of a b is a real vector space. If you replace the underlying field by uh, C and then consider complex valued continuous functions, then C of a b will be a complex uh, vector space. We can do a little more general. Let us uh, denote C k this time open interval to be the set of all functions, real valued uh, functions. Let me say f with the property, with the property that uh, let us say that I will use uh, the variable t for uh, any point on the interval a b. So, it is f of t for instance with the property that uh, d k f by d t k the kth derivative of f is continuous. The property that d k f uh, by d t k the kth derivative of f with respect to of course, there is only one variable here the independent variable is t. This is continuous in a b. Collect all such functions, real valued functions having this uh, property. Again uh, vector addition scalar multiplication as before, vector addition and scalar multiplication. As before, then this is a vector space. is a real vector space. We can do a little more general. One looks at C infinity of a b. This is now the set of all 
set of all functions real valued functions that are uh, infinitely many times differentiable. in the interval a b open interval a b same operations of vector addition scalar multiplication will tell you that this is a real uh, vector space that is c infinity a b okay that is c infinity a b let us consider uh, a more let, let us consider another example I will give it as example 10 uh, let us consider Let, um, okay, let me use this notation. Okay, let me use the notation f uh, of. Uh, let me use the notation f of a b, a b comma r. To be the set of all functions f from a b to r. Set of all real world functions depend on the open interval a b collect all those functions that is my capital F a b comma r. Now, uh, in this look at v as the set of all f and f such that integral a to b f of t dt exists that is f is Riemann integrable that is set of all functions that are Riemann integrable. Then with respect to again usual addition and scalar multiplication we can show that v is a vector space then V is a real vector space. Now, what is uh, what is the meaning uh, that this is a vector space? If F is Riemann integrable, G is Riemann integrable, then F plus G is Riemann integrable. If F is Riemann integrable, alpha is a real uh, number, then alpha times F is Riemann integrable. Okay. Example 11, suppose that uh, we have a matrix A of uh, order m by n. So, there are m rows n columns uh, entries are real numbers define v as the set of all vectors x and r n such that a x is 0 a x equal to the 0 vector. Now, remember a is an m cross n matrix x is a n cross 1 uh, any vector standing alone is a column vector. So, when I write uh, a vector as it is it is it is a column vector. So, the product here is m by n into n by 1. So, it is a usual product of matrices. So, the resultant is uh, m cross 1. This So, this 0 vector on the right hand side is a 0 vector which has m coordinates. Now, this is a vector space with re, now uh, this is a subset of Rn. This is a subset of Rn. Rn already has uh, vector addition scalar multiplication defined. It can be shown with respect to those operations that V is a vector space. Again, uh, close with respect to addition means what? If uh, x and y satisfy a x equal to 0 and a y equal to 0, then x plus y satisfies a of x plus y equal to 0 because a of x plus y is a x plus a y. Similarly, if x belongs to v, then alpha times x also belongs to v because alpha comes out here of this equation. Alpha comes out of this equation. So, this is a vector space. We also have another example. This uh, the example that I uh, gave as a motivating example. Let us look at the operator L defined on uh, on a function y, which is at least n times differentiable. Y is a function of the independent variable. Let us say t. Define L of y. So I am looking at this equation. L of y equals L of y is defined by um, d to the n y by d t to the n plus uh, a 1 d to the n minus 1 y by d t n minus 1 plus a 2 d n minus 2 y d t n minus 2 plus etcetera plus a n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 d y by d t plus a n y of t. Let us, uh, so let L be defined uh, in this manner. L is a differential operator. Consider V as the set of all y such that set of all y such that L of y equals 0. Okay. See, I must mention here that uh, a 1 etcetera, each of these is a function of uh, the independent variable t. 
each of these is a, uh, you can take them as constants uh, in particular, but in general they are functions of t. Then look at v as a set of all y. So this uh, you need y to be at least n minus, you need y to be at least n times differentiable in order for this to be defined. So collect all those functions, then uh, that satisfies, uh, then the co collect all those functions, then such a, uh, such a set is a vector space. If you consider a real valid function, then it is a real vector space. Let me give you a couple of more examples, some intuition coming from geometry. So example 3, V is the set of all x in R2. So this is a subset of R2. In fact, uh, it is a vector space in its own right. Set of all x in R2 such that x2 equals alpha times x1, alpha is a fixed number. x2 is alpha times x1, alpha is a fixed number. Okay. So, which means is you collect the set of all uh, vectors which have the property that the second coordinate is alpha times the first coordinate. Okay. Now, geometrically, what does this set represent? This set represents the set of all uh, points passing through the origin. This set represents the set of all points lying on a straight line passing through the origin. Okay. It can be shown again that this is a vector space. The set of all points lying on a particular straight line passing through the origin. The slope is given by alpha. A little more general, I will call that as example 14. V is the set of all uh, vectors in uh, the 3 space that satisfies something like x1 plus 2x2 plus uh, 5x3 equals 0. Geometric interpretation. This is the set of all uh, points lying on a certain plane passing through the origin. Okay. This can again be shown to be a vector space. Okay. So I hope uh, the abundance of these examples uh, illustrate the importance of uh, the notion of a vector space. Let me conclude uh, the lecture by giving two exam by giving at least one example of uh, of a of a subset of R two which is not a vector space. Example 15, let us look at V as the set of all x in R2 such that x2 is x1 plus 1, x2 is x1 plus 1, the second coordinate is uh, the uh, you add 1 to the first coordinate, collect all such vectors. This is again a straight line, the only thing is that this straight line does not pass through the origin. You can show that this is not a vector space. Okay. Now you must observe that uh, vector space must have 0. 0 must belong to the vector space. Now, this one does not have 0. Okay. So, this is not a vector space. One final example, non-example. So, this is not a vector space. One final example, let us say V equal to the set of all polynomials, set of all polynomials of degree precisely 2. I do not say degree less than or equal to 2, degree precisely 2. I leave it uh, for you to show that this is uh, not a vector space. It is not even closed with respect to addition. V is not a vector space. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me stop here. In the next lecture, I will discuss the notion of uh, subspaces, examples of subspaces, etcetera. <coughs>